Hi, and welcome to another Excel demo with Rich Kerr. In this scenario, I'm going to show you another method for determining how many years have elapsed since a given date. So I've got some higher dates in column A, and I'd like to know how long uh, each of the employees associated with these higher dates have been with the firm. Uh, so I'm going to start out with uh, equals, like every formula. And this will also be a refresher of the today function. So the today function reflects uh, the current date. So one way we could do this is take the, the current date and subtract the higher date, right? So we're doing a simple subtraction. Now, what you got to understand about this is you're going to end up with days as a result, right? So however many hundreds or thousands of days there were between today and that date. So I'm going to actually put that equation in a pair of parentheses and divide it by 365 and a quarter. Now you might ask why 365.25? Well every four years there's an extra day for leap year. <clears throat> so that averages out to a quarter year uh, uh, every year. So we'll hit our enter key and we can see that there's a result but it doesn't quite look like a number of years. <clears throat> Excel has formatted the result as a date. So we'll go to the number section of our home tab hit the pull down arrow and say uh, general no specific format so that comes out to 8.7 uh, years uh, so <clears throat> that might be what we're looking for uh, we could leave it like that and fill that formula down to the remaining remaining rows if you just want the whole uh, number portion like you don't want it to round up all right, sometimes people will do this they'll trim off the number of displayed decimals but the problem is of course 8.7 becomes 9 or that 11.989 eventually becomes 12 so if we would just want to show 8 for the one above and 11 for the one below one way you could do that is put the entire equation inside the integer function or int so the integer function trims off any decimals right it's a little less um, involved in using the rounding function where you have to specify the degree of rounding that you'd like to do so if I use the int function then it's just the whole number piece and I don't have to show any decimals so that's one way to go we can use the int function <clears throat> to trim down the result of today minus the higher date divided by 365 another way to do that we'll say years with firm Yeah, get in there. <laughs> and then we'll do um, equals year frac. So the year frac function lets me specify a start date, which would be that higher date, comma, and ending date would be today's date, and then the basis. So you have some options here. You could base this calculation off of a, a fiscal year of just 30 days per month and 360 days you can use that as your basis I'm not interested in doing that <clears throat> I want to use the actual number of days in every month and every year so that's going to be option number one in that drop down so you see we get the 8.7 just like we did with our manual calculation <clears throat> so I would probably put this inside the int function as well we'll put that in there and we get the same result <clears throat> so year frac gives me the same result as today minus the date divided by 365 and a quarter. Then in both cases I have them inside the int function int. I can fill that down. You see we get the exact same results. I'm going to show you a third method and I have another video on just this function but I'll put it in here. It's relevant. Uh, it's the undocumented date diff function. I say undocumented because date diff does not appear in the drop down list of Excel functions, but it works. We'll say date uh, diff, and I'm going to have a start date, which is the higher date. You see, you're not getting any help either, right? The date diff function is not prompting me to tell, you know, to, to put in certain parameters. You just have to know how it works. So there's a start date, comma, an ending date which would be today and then the unit of measure that you want to use in this case Y for years so date diff takes a start date and ending date in this example using today to reflect that and then uh, 
y for years, and again, I get 8. So it's just another way to get that same result. Now, what's kind of interesting with date diff is you could switch that y to m, for example, and that's the number of months that they've been with the firm. So that's a bit of flexibility that you don't get with the others. You'd have to modify those functions to do that. Here I just changed that parameter from Y to M. And you may have guessed you could also put D for days, although you wouldn't need the date diff function. You could just subtract the two dates. Uh, but that's it. So that is how you can calculate the number of years between two dates. And there are three methods to do so pick which one uh, you like the most. The first one is just uh, straight math with subtracting the current date, subtracting the previous date from the current date, divide by 365, and wrap it all inside the integer function. The second method was with year frac, which I guess is a way of saying what fractional part of a year or multiple years. So that takes the uh, start date, comma, the ending date, comma, and the number one to reflect that you're using actual month and year day lengths. So that incorporates leap year and months of varying lengths. I also put that inside the integer function because it would give you, you know, a component like 8.7 or 11.9, etc. And then finally, the date diff function, it might be my favorite when we're just talking about years. I don't have to round it or cut off the decimal places because the date diff function only gives you the round integer component uh, with no trailing decimals. And I can indicate Y for years or M for months or D for days. That's it. I hope you find this useful, guys. Please come back soon for more Excel demos with Rich Kerr. Have a productive day. Peace.